Hey everyone, and welcome to Citizen Science Adventures. My name is Chris Goforth, and I'm the head of Citizen Science at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences in Raleigh. I'm here in my backyard to share with you a way that you can get involved in scientific research right from your own home as a citizen scientist. Citizen Science projects are ones where the public is invited to participate alongside professional researchers to answer interesting scientific questions. This week, we're gonna be participating in a project called Project Squirrel, which is a project that's been around for a while and it is a really easy fun one to participate in. All you have to do is look for squirrels wherever you happen to be, make some basic observations and share those observations with Project Squirrel through their website. They have a really simple web form. You have all filled out a form online and if you can do that you can participate in this project. Project Squirrel is a really great one because squirrels are great indicators of environmental change. They can tell us if urbanization is changing our local habitats or if land use changes are happening in an area. Squirrels can tell us a lot about what is happening over a large scale and you can help researchers learn more about how our environments are changing by making basic reports on squirrels that you see. In this video, we're gonna cover how to make observations for Project Squirrel. We're gonna show you how to actually look for squirrels. I'm gonna take you on a trip to my neighborhood park. My yard doesn't have very many squirrels, but I do know a place nearby where I can find them. So I'll share with you some videos of the squirrels that I see there. I'll show you what observations you need to make for Project Squirrel and how to enter them through the website. And it's gonna be really, really simple. This is a great project, it's a lot of fun, it's very easy to do, and I hope that you'll enjoy coming along with us on this week's Citizen Science Adventure as we explore squirrels. Before we look at the data sheet or go out and collect some data, let's take a look at the two types of squirrels that you're gonna to need to know to participate in Project Squirrel in North Carolina. The first one is this one, which is the Eastern Gray Squirrel. And there's a few key characteristics you can look for to tell that you're looking at an Eastern Gray Squirrel instead of a Fox Squirrel. The first is look at that belly. It's mostly white on the Eastern Gray Squirrels. And for the most part, Fox Squirrels don't have entirely white bellies like this. There is a little bit of overlap between the two, but for the most part, if you see a completely white belly, you're looking at an Eastern Gray Squirrel. They also tend not to have a whole lot of rust coloration on their bodies. So here you can see a little bit in the armpits and a little bit in the tail, but for the most part, the squirrel is fairly gray. That's normal for an Eastern gray squirrel. The tricky thing with gray squirrels is that they can be other colors as well. So in the Brevard area in North Carolina, the white squirrels on the college campus there are rather famous in North Carolina and they're completely white. So their whole body is white. These can also be black, and so they can have no white, no gray, no brown, anything and be completely black. So they're not all going to be this same coloration. You could have a little bit of variation and have a white or a black eastern gray squirrel as well. But look for the completely white belly, the kind of general overall gray color, and for the most part, you're going to be looking at an eastern gray squirrel. Now let's take a look at the fox squirrel and see how it differs. This is a fox squirrel. You can see right away that it does not have a white belly, at least this individual, and remember that they can have a little bit of white sometimes. But if you see that kind of rusty colored belly, for the most part, you're looking at a fox squirrel and not an eastern gray squirrel. They also tend to be a little bit browner overall, so they've got a lot more of that rust color on their face, and their tail, on their feet, and so they tend to look a little less gray and a little more brown. The fox squirrels are also a little bit larger than the eastern gray squirrels. That's a little tricky to see unless you have both of them together. So you're gonna have to just kind of get to know one or the other, and then you'll get a feel for how big they're supposed to be and be able to tell the size difference once you see the other one. So for the most part, we just have Eastern gray squirrels, fox squirrels. We do also have flying squirrels in our state, of course, but those tend to be out at night and so not ones that Project Squirrel is as interested in. All right, let's take a look at the data sheet and then go out and collect some data. Project Squirrel has no data sheets available, but they have specific things that they want you to report on in the web form that they have on their website. So I created this data sheet to help me out when I'm out in the field, remember what I need to include for my data collection. So let's just go over it very quickly. You're gonna need your date, the time and the location, the zip code where you're located, and that helps them figure out kind of which part of the country you're in. They want to know how many squirrels you saw, and they want you to divide up the eastern gray squirrels and the fox squirrels, so hopefully you'll be able to tell those two apart. 
They also want to know if you saw the squirrels getting food from bird feeders, humans, garbage, or other. And if you have other, they want you to specify what that other means. They also want to know a little bit about the area where you saw the squirrels. So they want to know what kind of environment it is, whether it's a house or a zoo or a high-rise building, neighborhood park. So you check off the one that fits where you are. They want to know what types of trees are at the site. And you don't have to fill out the tree question, but it is helpful if you know the trees to report the ones that you saw. They wanna know how many dogs and cats are in the area because dogs and cats roaming around a park might influence the number of squirrels that you see. And then they give you a chance to report any additional comments or observations. And so there's a space on the data sheet. Now I like to print this out and take it out in the field with me and actually fill it out so that when I go to the web form to enter my data, I know I've got everything that I need. And so you can do the same as well. There will be a link to this data sheet in the comments below the video so that if you want to print your own, you can do that. All right, let's go for a walk in the park and see what squirrels we can see. This is the first squirrel that I saw. It is an Eastern gray squirrel, which you can tell because of the white belly. And it sat on a log for a few moments and then ran up in the tree. I didn't see it eat anything while I was watching it. This is the second squirrel I saw. And this one was much more interesting than the first one. It popped up on the fence and ran across a little ways before I started the video. But then it sat on this post and it, did some interesting things. While I was watching it, there were a couple of dogs that went by, and so I recorded two dogs on my data sheet. And yeah, this squirrel groomed for quite a while. It just sat on the post. I was only about 10 or 12 feet away, and it sat there and groomed for quite a while. I didn't see the squirrel eat anything either, like the first one, and so no evidence of the squirrels eating. I saw two dogs, no cats, and I saw pine trees and oak trees and maple trees out of the list of trees that they're interested in. And so that is what I saw for my squirrels. Uh, just two squirrels, but it was still pretty interesting. This one was super cute. Look at him just like licking itself, rubbing its paws, scratching. Really awesome to be able to see that. I saw two squirrels in my neighborhood park, so I wanna go ahead and enter the data. I'm going to show you the form. I'm not gonna fill it out while I'm showing you the form. I'll fill it out once I'm done recording, but it's a really, really simple form, just a basic web form. You don't have to create an account. Let me point out too that there are some resources on the left side of the page. So there's information about gray versus fox squirrels. If you ever have a question, they share some information about what they've learned. And if you have squirrel photos, they really like to have those as well. And there's a place to enter those. But I'm gonna go ahead and tap on become a citizen scientist right in the middle of the screen. And that will take me to their web form. This is just in SurveyMonkey. It's a really simple, basic form. You all know how to fill these out. And if you use the data sheet that I shared with you, all the information that is going into this form is the exact same information that's on the data sheet. And so you just go through and put the same information in. They want to know what day and what time you went looking for squirrels. They want to know where you were. If you're willing to share your email address, they might have, um, come back to you with questions later. And so it's really great to do that, but that is optional. And then they want to know how many individual squirrels you saw at this location. Now, this is a good time to mention the value of zero data. If you went looking for squirrels and you did not see squirrels, it is still worthwhile to fill out this form and put zeros in these two boxes for the gray squirrels and the fox squirrels. The fact that you have no squirrels in your neighborhood might say something really important about the environment that you're in. So there might be dogs or coyotes or cats or something that is keeping the squirrels away. It might be the wrong time of day to see squirrels. There's so many reasons why you might not see squirrels. So go ahead and fill the form out if you went looking for squirrels and you didn't find any. And you will make some scientists really happy for actually reporting those zero sightings. However, if you did see squirrels, go ahead and put the total numbers into the boxes, and that is great too. Then they wanna know what the setting was, if there were any kinds of trees at your site, so you fill in which ones you saw. They wanna know if you saw the squirrels getting food. Again, this is just what's on the data sheet. How many dogs and cats there were. 
if you've submitted data for this site before, so they want to be able to go back and tie this data to that location, and they want to know if you've ever submitted data for another site, because that tells them how experienced you are in the project. Now, number 12 is a really great place to share any information you want to share. If you just want to tell a story about your experience or something funny that the squirrel did or you saw the squirrel interact with something, box 12 is where you can put that information. This project particularly likes those stories. They like to share them. And so you can share pretty much anything you want to about your experience and they will be happy to have it. So fill out box 12 if you have anything other than the data that you already entered that you'd like to share and they would be thrilled to have it. And then you click done and that's it. And you are completely done with your data entry. This is the easiest project to participate in because you're just filling out a really basic web form and it's very, very simple. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my data in and submit it off screen uh, and then we'll wrap this up. Success! We saw some squirrels, we made some basic observations, and we submitted them to Project Squirrel through their website. And that is it. That is all you have to do to participate in this project. It really couldn't be easier. We hope that you will join us on the Citizen Science Adventure as we explore squirrels for Project Squirrel. If you can see squirrels at your window, in your backyard, in a neighborhood park, anywhere you happen to be in the U.S. at any time, you can participate in this project and we really hope that you will. Your data will be used by scientists to monitor environmental change and it's a really great way for you to get involved in scientific research right from your own home.